Hello and good morning, everybody. Hi, good morning. This is Felicia Heath. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Absolutely fantastic. Been waiting to talk with you because hummingbirds are such a powerful totem animal that it's like, oh, I cannot wait to really dig into this story. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for having me. What, what is your connection to the hummingbird and, and to have the spirit of a hummingbird? Well, the hummingbird represents and symbolizes you know joy and tenacity mm -hmm. and just getting through hard times with a positive outlook i think midway through the book you you definitely get an idea of where the the title came from yeah absolutely and it's one of those where i i want listeners to to really participate with this story and go into it with an open heart because you really do invite them to not only enjoy the story but maybe to search their own hearts as well for sure definitely what kind of other books do, do you find yourself putting out there in the way of, you know, to have a continuation? Because it's, this is one of those stories where you go, I, I want more. I want I want more. And I think it's because I'm a binge watcher when it comes to television. <laughs> well, you know, when I when I go over my reviews and s some of the feedback, it does sound like people want more, more of the second half of the story, mm -hmm. uh, the adulthood and maybe more of the healing process. So. I, I would consider that certainly. Yeah. The One of the things that you, you put in here, I mean, you've got such a real world here in the way of trauma, betrayal, fear, helplessness, and yet, and yet, this is this is the fun part. There's a healing. And and that to me is that that's the, the victory at the end. Yes. Um, I think a lot of it was almost a coping mechanism mm -hmm. at the time, like a lot of positive self-talk in order to get through it. And that carried through into my adult life. And it's actually, you know, done me well. Being from, from Vietnam or having those connections to Vietnam, I work with a gentleman that is from there and the stories he shares with me. In fact, I, we even have neighbors that would love to move there. For you to bring these stories forward like this, this, this really gives people an identity to have a, a, like, hey, th this is about my culture as well. Yes. Um, you know, I've been back to visit a couple of times and I brought as much as I could from the imagery and the feelings, the culture into the book where it was relevant. And there's been so many people that I meet during book signings that have a connection one way or the other. And it really resonates with them. One of the things, I mean, it, it's, it had to have been an open heart that you held in your hands when because we, we don't know a person until we experience their story. And that's what you put your, you know, you put your, your breath, your heartbeat, everything into this. Yes, uh, I wanted to give my readers the most authentic version of the story I possibly could. So I relived all of those experiences and the emotions, not only for my audience, but for myself as a as a healing process. It was it was therapy. Did you journal during this? Because that, that's one of the things that I do as a, as a writer is that when I when I start building a book, I, I have a separate journal that explains why I did this, the emotions I went through, so that I can identify. Because as writers, you know how we are. Sometimes we can get you know, kind of crazy with our emotions. <laughs> Definitely, I I didn't necessarily journal, but I guess you could consider it. I did. I dedicated some time. You know, this was all during COVID, where I wrote for a few hours, like once or twice a week, and then I put those passages together so i i think you could consider journaling in a way and i also outlined a lot of stuff it's it's it takes work actually mm -hmm. to make sense of things that happened in the past through the eyes eyes of the child and isn't it really weird how the things that we go through later on in life it becomes tools Yes, when you reassess them with a mature mind, there are so many more layers and appreciation for what you've been through. When you spend your early life on the run like you did, how do you slow down to enjoy life? How do you, know, how do you get into your presence of what is right now? Yeah, so it's interesting because I've been working on this. You know, I'm so used to this fast paced, highly chaotic. And although it's not the same as it was in my past where it was negative, it's all positive stuff. Mm -hmm. I do have to be mindful about not taking on too much so that I can stay present. Um, 
it definitely helps to have kids to slow <laughs> life down <laughs> because you know they grow so fast so you really just have to live in the moment and slow it down because before you know it you'll miss it all see that's why i always try to convince uh, listeners that you know if, if you're looking to slow down life go locate boredom and when you sit in boredom all of a sudden time basically stands still for a moment Mm-hmm. definitely but when it comes to reading a book, don't you like trans- that that energy of knowing that our imaginations are going someplace? I like that. Before this, this this meta quest that was out where we can just you know put this, these goggles on our head and we go into this <laughs> world. Writing, go read a book, go for that I adventure. Oh, know. I know. I, I think it's just as effective as and any kind of you know VR video game that you play um, to just open your mind up and let let the story take over. Now, one of the things that I can relate with in this story, because I, I did not get to really have a relationship with my father. Well, look mm-hmm. at look at this here. Does does your father have a place in your future? <sighs> right now, it doesn't look like it. Okay. Uh, there was a possibility, and we've had our interactions here and there, but it just didn't feel real and genuine. And I, he was also very against the book being published. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Wow. I've been on the Barnes and Noble tour with other writers and boy, we've, we've talked about things like that. Like, because it's so easy to silence someone who's holding a writing instrument or their fingers are on a keyboard. Mm-hmm. So we haven't spoken since the book's been published. Wow. How do you deal with that creatively? Because, I mean, like I said, what, you know, we as creative people, it, it comes from the universe and it moves right through us into the into the hearts and eyes of, of those that are going to read it. Uh, I think it's OK. You know, we have this expectation in our heads what uh, a father should be like. And it's not always that black and white and easy and not every relationship the same and some some don't serve you, you know, positively at all. And it's not something we have to hold on to just because um, it's some society's, you know, image or expectation of a father's role. Do you have a favorite writing place? Mm, so when I wrote this, I was <laughs> I was in a Airbnb studio in Philadelphia nice. all by myself. But I write it just in my office, a little corner office in my in my house. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, see, a lot of people don't understand that because it's like my writing place is different from where I come in to do, you know, do, do a broadcast. But, and, and they're two completely different personalities. People don't realize that writers and other things that we do in our life, those are just different transitions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So my space that I use for, you know, work is not the same space that I use to be creative. Yeah. And you have to learn how to respect it, don't you? Definitely. What, what are your writing times? I'm, I'm a very early morning person. Yeah, with my kind of schedule, you know, I, a lot of the, the writing, the creative part or the cre- is already happening in my mind. And then I yep. have to literally schedule, you know, dedicated, protected time. I would say usually in the evening after yeah. the kids go down with a glass of wine. I hear that a lot with with <laughs> with, uh, with moms and stuff. And now, uh, speaking of the glass of wine, I'll, I'll bring this up. Many times I'll ask somebody, did you have a wine glass moment where you went into your story after a couple of sips and said, all right, I've got the confidence. I'm going to change this just to see how I'm going to write myself out of it. <laughs> uh, I can't specifically remember a moment of doing that but i i did drink you know wine the entire time i wrote it <laughs> <laughs> see that's like one of my books what i did was i was drinking wine and i went went in and i actually took out a character and then and i challenged myself to you know okay now what are you gonna do with the story you just took out one of the big characters and i and i told myself figure it out figure it out oh wow and because I, I, I just writers in general just inspire me so much because of because of the chances that we take just by putting words on a page, you're taking mm-hmm. a chance. Oh, yeah. And just even with the stories I decided to include in the memoir, I think I was taking a chance. Is it weird to call it a memoir? Because, I mean, as readers, we have to remind ourselves that it is about you. Uh, I don't think it's weird. Is it, I mean, I mean, it's it's like in in the way of like okay, because easily this this could have been a story, and in, in, in that was just you know put you know like nonfiction. Oh yeah, yeah, I guess so. I think the memoir part um, comes because I try to write it through the eyes of me being very young. Yeah. So um, you know, there you have to fill in some of the gaps and be creative and. Um, make something very painful into art. 
you know, one of the things that I've learned in talking with actors and even songwriters and stuff, if you don't share your story, the future doesn't receive it. And that's what's great about you putting this book together, because I want listeners to read this and I want them to understand that even their story needs to belong to the future. Oh, if it's just by me writing it, it just leaves it leaves. I don't know, a story for my kids, the pages, the mm-hmm. physical pages are left, you know, long after I'm gone. It's just so meaningful to me. Uh, and yeah, absolutely. We really should, you know, embrace our stories. Because um, if you change your perspective and you you share your story, you'll eventually find power in it. Absolutely. Where can people go to find out more about you, to discover you and to support you? So you can find me on Instagram. I am Felicia Keith underscore MD. I also have a blog called mixedfeelingsmama.com. And my book is available as an audiobook as well as a paperback on all platforms. Amazon, Barnes & Noble. Is it your voice? Yes, I narrate the whole thing. See, that's beautiful. You, you <laughs> totally get it. You totally get it. It's a memoir, so I couldn't use anybody else's voice. (laughs) (laughs) Please come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Well, you be brilliant today, okay? You too.